football. Brilliant. We asked before the game, can Leeds United adapt? Will Bielsa adapt his tactics to, to play against a top-notch team like this? And he was forced to go down to yeah. 10 men and then he adapted and they were magnificent to a man. Carried out everything tactically perfectly in the second half, especially 45 minutes down to 10 men against a team like this. Possession base is very difficult. Concentration levels yeah. at its maximum, but also energy. When they won the ball, they were still a threat with 10 men. They, yeah. they had a couple of chances. Edison saved them uh, before the goal went at the death there. They, they fully deserved this result today. Fantastic performance. Listen, going down to 10 men obviously forced them to play the way they did and it was successful. Going down to 10 men didn't force them to be looking for a winner in added on time at the end of the game. It's brilliant. Oh, amazing. Um, fully deserved the victory there but like we have said it forced them to make a tweak to their to their kind of setup it helped them but the fact that man city had so many players so high it always it always gives you an incentive to push man forward i think there's so much space in behind the back line that you're thinking yeah we can we can get a goal and create an opportunity to score and this is what they've done and Joe Stones will be disappointed slightly because he's put a lot of energy into being high up the pitch, but then it probably reduced the amount of energy he had there to, to make that recovery run. Yeah, he runs off of Fernandinho initially, but you put John Stones' favourite to win that ball there. He's got to turn and get the burners on a bit quicker, I think. And I think he'll be disappointed, I'd say, at the end of it, looking back when he sees it, where his position was when the ball was played. Could he have adjusted a little bit easier, a bit quicker? But yeah. you have to give the credit as well to this team. Stuart Dallas, the energy levels of this team, Stuart Dallas in particular and Calvin Phillips in midfield was phenomenal. Shall we hear from Stuart Dallas? Yes. OK, here we go. He's with Des. Finish. Um, anyone know the last team to come to Manchester City and win in the Premier League in stoppage time? No. What no. year? It was the know. one, 2012. Robin Van Persie, I'm sure oh. you remember the... Oh, yeah, I remember how that year went. How did that year finish? <laughs> 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 Let's turn attention back to this one. Um, what, from, from a Pep Guardiola perspective, what do you sort of learn from and react on a day like this? Because if he looks at the numbers that tell him we had 29 shots at goal, they had two and scored two, do you just put it down to a sort of freak result? No, that's, that's doing a disservice to Leeds. They've come here and obviously had a game plan. It's been hindered due to the sending off and they've executed their second one in the, throughout the second half and fully deserved that win. But in regards to to Man City's numbers, yes, I think that's a, an odd situation. I don't think there'll be many games where they have 29 attempts on goal and, mm. and only score one goal. What amazing defensive, resolute, solid work from Leeds United. Well, listen, you're going you're gonna to have to do that. You're going to have to work to a man. You come into Etihad and, and try to get a win, especially when you're going down to 10 men. But listen, these guys were committed. They had their game plan at the beginning. Yes, it gets changed. And it's, that's a big thing as well. You get a sending off. Some teams capitulate when it happens and they fold and everything's all at sea. They seemed composed and calm. They all knew their jobs. They looked like they were absolutely under control in terms of where they're meant to be as individuals, but also as a collective. And like I said earlier, we can see all these defensive clips that there are also a cutting edge of leads when they won the ball. They were getting up the other end of the pitch, slicing through leads at times. Not often, but when they did, they ended up getting a shot on goal a majority of the time or an opportunity in front of goal. But I thought City at times, in the first half especially, they had a couple of half chances where you feel they could have done better. But... Again, you've got to give Leeds credit because, again, it, it, to come here, you do need to ride your luck a little bit. Mm. But at the same time, you've got to make your luck with the way you energised, the way you committed in, in, in your tackles, in your personal duels. And people run themselves into the ground. I mean, Calvin Phillips, I've got to give him special mention in midfield because I thought he got through a hell of a lot of work today. And Dallas, again, being at the other end when they won the ball in the transition, had that energy to get beyond. Yeah, I can echo all them, them thoughts there from Rio. But as you said, it's, you need luck when you're playing mm. against these top teams and they've rode their luck at times, but fully deserve to, to score with the, the two chances they had. And isn't that what we want from newly promoted teams, to come into the Premier League and do that? I mean, we saw Pep looking furious there. You know, it's only the second time in his career that he's been beaten at home by a team who've just been promoted. But if you're going to come to the Premier League, play that way. Come and entertain us. Yeah, they're not being conservative. They're just, they just throw everything at them. They, they, they go at it. They, they come to a game. I'd love to see it when the fans are in the stadium because the reaction of the fans to see how committed they are on the front foot. Everything's, there's never a step back with this Leeds team. Yes, they went down to 10 men and they maybe were a bit more conservative and cautious, but it's always on the front foot. And the fans at Leeds, the way they'd respond to that would be amazing in the Premier League. Yeah, I can, as I said, I can imagine what that place will be like um, seeing the performances like this. But as I said, it, it could be different for other reasons as well. The players may look to hide as well because the negative reactions impact players as well. Yeah, would have been some party in the away end down there, wouldn't it, if they'd, oh. have, uh, if they'd have been in here today. Let's talk about Farron Torres. There's been so much talk about Aguero and what happens next in terms of the striker role. We, we sort of assessed the chances of Raheem in that position before the game. What about Ferran Torres? I like him up front. Mm -hmm. I honestly say... I, I, 
He has a natural movement that reminds me of a Sergio Aguero. I think he's he's more efficient in his movement than Jesus. I think we've seen that through his goal. Um, he knows where to be to affect play and also adjust the uh, positions of defenders. And you see he just pulls off here and he just waits for the pass and it's a tidy finish. And I think early in the season against Sheffield United, we've seen examples of it as well. And it's a little slip, but to just to pull off the shoulder and recognise the ball's going to come to you and then be able to just be that composed as well. We've done a couple of games earlier in the season. We've done loads of clips on his movement in and around the box. He moves like a centre forward. Yeah. I think he was bought as a wide man, but I think Pep's quickly identified that in and around the box, he's got natural movement of a striker to, to create space for himself within like two or three yards. Mm -hmm. That's all you need. And then it's down to composure and execution. And it, he's shown on numerous occasions this season that he's composing them areas. Could he be the man? We'll have to wait and see. I think Guardiola is the man to, 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 yeah. to assess that. I think, listen, I think if... If Haaland becomes a gettable option, I don't think anyone turns that down. Yeah. But if it's beyond their reach financially or the whole package doesn't work out, I think they've got someone in there that is workable. We're going to be covering City again this week in the Champions League. Um, they've got a good result to take with them to Germany, but they still need to go there and do the business. Does this have any impact at all on what happens in a few days' time? I don't think so. No. Um, I think it'll be a different set of players, different set of players and different focus as well. And, and obviously, you know what's at stake. As much as there hasn't been many games where there's been complacency, and I don't think that was the case today, but going into that Champions League game, knowing what is at stake and, and the kind of what's on the, the end goalies and the driver, um, I don't think it'll have a bearing on the result. And from, and from a Leeds perspective, to come here, to get the winner, to take the lead before they did that as well, which we can see now, in terms of confidence ahead of this, for the rest of this season, going into next season? Listen, they, Bielsa needs to take huge credit and the squad as well, the way that where they are. They're in and around the likes of Aston Villa and, and, and Everton, who are, their managers are getting all the plaudits. Bielsa needs to come into that conversation as well. But what I would say today, that the way that they performed, Yes, that's a direct ball, but it's then what happens off that. You see Dallas is there connected to Fernandinho. He makes the run. It's the energy there, identifying the space and then being clinical at the end of it. And it was just today, they had minimal opportunities, but they were the clinical team and more efficient team in that department. And does it change their thinking in games when they're a goal up and they've got 11 men on the pitch? I don't think it does. I think that has helped them slightly in regards to players being able to condense and be compact and then obviously break. OK, well, Manchester City did their best to break them down. They had 29 attempts today, but only the one goal, and they were beaten. Let's get the reaction of the manager, Pep Guardiola. Pep, how did that get away from you today? Sorry? How did that game get away from you today? 11-11 uh, went tight, and the best moment that we have, we conceded a goal that we had to avoid it, so we were not aggressive enough in these areas. So, But uh, the read, uh, we arrived in the final positions with the opposition, unfortunately, we could not... Uh, we could not score a goal, and um, and after the after the send off for them, the second half uh, we were there. Mm -hmm. We didn't create them matches, uh, chances enough maybe to create a little bit more. But when we play against teams to set up in that way with the pace they have in the contra, we have to avoid the contra. But before the goal, we concede another one, so we have to control the side with the Joao Alex. We could not do it, and after yeah, at the end can happen because they have a team like the transition are fantastic. And, uh, and yeah, they congratulate Leeds. Is, is that a lesson in the sense that Manchester City had 29 shots, Leeds had two, they took their two opportunities. Is that a lesson in concentration? Yeah, the last game, the last game uh, in Champions League, United, um, United sorry. Uh, uh, Bayern Munich yeah. scored 36 and, uh, and, and PSG 5 and won PSG. So. But it was not, not much clear, the chances. We have shoots, but not that much clear. And... Um, but John was fantastic and Dino as well. We arrived in the final third, but after that, we, we could not create much. Would you put it down then as a sort of freak result, or, or something just abnormal, different? It wasn't, it wasn't something that you could have planned for. You know what I'm saying? Freak result. No, when I play a game, always I'm thinking we can win or we can lose. Yeah. So I'm not expecting. We prepare the game as good as possible with a less recovery the last game, like it happened all the season. And the guys, we tried, but we couldn't do it. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. Just a reminder that in this league, you can think what you're going to see, but you just never know. Yeah, Premier League, and that's the beauty of the Premier League, to be fair. We, we can see or try and predict games before they happen, but then when they do execute like that, it's exciting. Great fun. Great fun to watch, wasn't it? Yeah, that's why I think it's branded as the, the most entertaining league in the world, because these kind of results get thrown up all the time. And I think this is the best team in the land. And, and other teams come here, gone down to 10 men and still come out with the three points.
you never know what's going to happen in a Premier League game. Absolutely, and a great message for all teams that might be before long promoted to the Premier League. Um, that's it from us. Tomorrow we're going to be in Sheffield. Sheffield United up against Arsenal in the afternoon, so make sure you join us for that one. But for this one, congratulations, huge congratulations to Leeds United. Time, and I think this is the best team in the land. And another team's come here, gone down to 10 men and still come out with the three points. You never know what's going to happen in a Premier League game. Absolutely, and a great message for all teams that might be before long promoted to the Premier League. Um, that's it from us tomorrow.